every area and dimension of your life will overflow with blessings from an uncontainable source of joy. I just have to ask, do you hear the invitation to a specific kind of expectation here? When you do this spiritual practice, the devourer is shut down. In modern terms, what that means is God personally shuts down anything that would mess up your receiving, your profit, your revenue, your harvest, your results. What good news. I believe you have an optional but wonderful invitation to hand this area over to God. No, God loves you more than you love yourself even. On your best day or your worst day, knowing that God wants you to prosper even more than you want to prosper, and knowing that God knows how to take way better care of you than anything you could ever make happen or manufacture. That is all coming up right here on the Stefan Lovegrove Show. Welcome in. If you have just found yourself at this video, I want you to know this is part two of an incredible teaching all about the three specific ways that giving has profoundly changed my life. I would strongly encourage you, click the link that is in this episode description, begin with part one and make sure that you get all of the info because we have already talked through the first two types of giving that are on my list. And so you can click that link now and hear all about category one and category two and all the juicy principles there. When you're ready, this is part two and I am excited to continue the conversation with you here knowing this is going to be a turning point day that you may just remember for the rest of your life. So without further delay, let's dive back into the teaching and keep it going with part two. When I sow a seed, I get to tap into my vision, my energy, my heart, my dream, my desire. I get to tap into this is the harvest that I am believing for. And I get my belief behind it and I use my faith. And all of that happens, right? There is great expectation. But then think about this with me. In order to plant a seed, you have to let go of it. Think about it on a literal sense. You have to let it drop into the ground. You have to release it into the unseen realm. And so what I get to practice every time I sow is getting excited about the harvest, seeing the vision, expecting it and using my faith, but then also letting go and releasing. And it's almost like the energetic equivalent. This is what I feel of dropping the seed into the ground, covering it back up with dirt, and moving on. Not because I gave up on the seed or because I forgot that I planted the seed, but because I released it into the unseen realm. And so I pray that you can feel into this flow. It will make such a difference for you in so many areas of life. And sowing is certainly a place to practice this. Expect, then release. Believe, then move forward at the frequency of it is done. Claim it and then let go because you've done your part. This is category two, the power of sowing and reaping. And then we move last but not least 
to category three. And as you heard me say earlier, we just keep building. You can carry over everything from category one. You can also carry over everything from category two. I'll say more about that in a moment. But now we arrive at category three, which I am calling the spiritual practice of tithing. Category three, the spiritual practice of tithing. And notice, I use that language very intentionally because it is not to me the rule of tithing, the obligation of tithing, the pressure of tithing, the guilt trip of tithing, the religion of tithing. It is not any of those things to me. In fact, you don't have to be religious for this at all. I call it, and I view it as, the spiritual practice of tithing. And it is indeed a spiritual practice that has changed my life and blessed my life. So let's talk about it. No pressure, no obligation with any of this that I share at any point today, because as I've already spoken, giving is always something and only something that can be done as a joyful, conscious choice. But I do love this topic, and I do want to give you clarity and answer your questions. So let's talk about it for a few minutes today. Tithing is choosing to have God as your business partner and personal investor. I know that might be unusual language that maybe a lot of people wouldn't use with it, but I'm Stefan Lovegrove, you know that by now. This is how I view it, and I'll unpack all of this for you. To me, tithing is choosing to have God as your business partner and personal investor. Now, just like I didn't assume that everybody knows what we mean about sowing and reaping. I also don't assume that even people who have maybe heard this word really know all the specifics and nuances of this concept. So let's just lay some groundwork here. What are we talking about? What is the definition of tithing? How does this work? Well, this is the concept. Every time you receive, Someone who practices tithing will give the first 10% of what they have received to the place they hear from God. To the place that they consider a spiritual home that nourishes their soul, the well that they draw from spiritually. So, That is the concept at the core. Every time you receive, you give the first 10% of what you have received to the place that you hear from God. The place that you consider a spiritual home, a well that you draw from and want to pour back into. And I want you to listen to this ancient text and promise that people have believed and practiced for thousands of years across multiple faiths, languages, ethnicities, religions, cultures, countries, and belief systems. Here's one text that has lingered and endured through the years that describes this spiritual practice. It says, honor God with your wealth, by the way, because God is the source, bringing the first fruits of every increase that comes to you. And then every area and dimension of your life will overflow with blessings from an uncontainable source of joy. There is a very strong principle and promise being taught here. Bring the first fruits of every increase, and then 
every area and dimension of your life will overflow with blessings from an uncontainable source of joy. I just have to ask, do you hear the invitation to a specific kind of expectation here? Again, this is why I can't fully get on board with the most spiritual thing is to give expecting nothing. I do want people to give with no agenda and to give with no attachment. But once again, we have an undeniable invitation to expect. And so, as we've done with all the categories, I want to talk about here, what are the principles behind this? Principles that, that apply to every single one of these all throughout this episode. And let's talk about the principles behind this one because there are a lot of rich principles here. First of all, no pun intended, I would argue we have the spiritual principle of firsts. The spiritual principle of firsts, which basically just says, What we do first in any endeavor is significant. What we do first matters. What we do first sets the tone. This is the spiritual principle of firsts. You may have heard me teach this idea that one text says, trust God from the beginning, from the very start, and whatever plans you make will succeed. Remember the spiritual truth that's being communicated there? It's not so much about whether or not you have perfect plans. It's about, did you trust? Did you surrender? What did you do first? And that is really the same concept here. It's not about if you are the smartest person in the world with money. It's not about If you manifested to the highest degree everything when it comes to money. But there is a principle about what happens when we trust, what happens when we surrender, the significance of what we do first. So that is one of the principles here, the spiritual principle of first. Another principle here, the number 10 represents completion in this ancient numerology. The way that they viewed it is that 10 was the highest individual number and anything beyond that was a a new combination. 11, for example, they did not see as a new number. They saw 11 as 10 plus one. They did not see 100 even as a new number. They saw 100 as a multiple of 10. And so, 10 is the ultimate. 10 is the highest. 10 represented completion. And so another principle here from thousands of years is that the 10% is a stand in for the whole. In other words, what you do with the 10%, you do to the 100% for the hundred percent, over the hundred percent. You know, perhaps the most famous tithing text of all says, when you do this spiritual practice and get ready for some ancient language here, it says, the devourer is rebuked for your sake. Now, The devourer is really referring to pests, which I'm kind of okay with because I really don't like bugs and insects, and I know they're important, and I know we need them in the ecosystem, and I still don't like bugs, and my worst nightmare was that show in Disney World that I don't even know if they still have, I think they brought it back, called It's Tough to Be a Bug, and let me know in the comments if you ever had to endure that awful thing where you're sitting in a dark theater overrun with bugs, supposedly crawling all over you, I did not enjoy. But anyway, the devourer is most literally referring to bugs because 
that was the biggest threat to their harvest, to their receiving, to their wealth. And so hear the significance of this. The most famous tithing text of all says, when you do this spiritual practice, the devourer is shut down. In modern terms, what that means is anything that would cost you unnecessarily, anything that would create loss and liability for you, anything that would sabotage your good and your receiving, anything that would block your money and your flow, any of that, the devourer is rebuked for your sake. It's almost said like God personally shuts down anything that would mess up your receiving, your profit, your revenue, your harvest, your results. What good news. And this is maybe a funny analogy, but I, I kind of view it like, based on this text and this idea, tithing is kind of like running all the money that flows into my life through the blessing car wash. I don't know how you all feel about these. Again, many opportunities to chime in on weird random topics, I guess, in the comments today. But do you like those drive through car washes? I think they're amazing. I think as an adult, they are so fun. And I love to crank a song that I enjoy really loud and drive through one of those things with all the suds and the the colored brushes spinning around the car and the, the sounds and the rattling and I don't know. I think it is so fun. It's like a little mini carnival ride or something. But again, maybe a strange analogy, but I really do view tithing like running all the money that flows through my life through that blessing car wash. And this is so real to me. I feel divinely protected from bad decisions, bad investments, bad money moves, bad clients, bad ideas, anything that would not be wise, that would not serve me, anything that would sabotage my good. I feel protected. And every time I do this spiritual practice, it is a reminder that I am protected. And every time I do this spiritual practice, I stand in the truth that the devourer is rebuked. And every time I do this spiritual practice, I drive through that blessing car wash and I celebrate that I am protected, I am safe, I am solid. I shared with you here, the way that I really view it is that tithing is welcoming God into your life as your business partner and personal investor. Truly stepping into the paradigm that God is your source. And here is my favorite part of it all, okay? Remember, 10% represents completion in the system of numerology. And so there is actually a significance to this detail, a massive significance. Now, I didn't understand this significance when I first started practicing this 14 years ago. Nobody explained it to me. I didn't even fully understand this when I talked about generosity in that program in 2018. So I couldn't pass on to you that the percentage mattered because at that time I didn't know, I didn't understand, I didn't get it. But now I know. And so I think I have a spiritual obligation to share it. Absolutely no gatekeeping here about the percentage question. Here's the thing. 
If I give the 10% as a spiritual practice to somewhere that I feel connected to God and where I hear from God, it is spiritually, energetically, and metaphysically equivalent to me giving 100%. And when I think about that, by the way, knowing the amount I've given over the years, when I think about that amount times 10, because every time I gave the first 10%, it was a stand-in for the whole, like I gave 100%, the impact of my giving is unreal when I think about that significance. But what this means is, if you receive, let's say for sake of example, $75,000 and you give the first 10%, so you give $7,500, right? What we're saying is because 10 is the number of completion and 10 represents the whole and 10% is a stand in for 100%. If you give that 7,500, this principle is saying, it's like you gave 75,000. That is how it is viewed and how it speaks on your behalf into the universe on a divine level. Meaning, you are putting absolutely everything into the hands of God. All of this area, all of the flow, all of your finances. If you give the 10% as a spiritual practice to somewhere that you hear from God and feel spiritually connected, it is spiritually equivalent to you giving 100%. Meaning, you are putting everything into the hands of God, specifically all of this area, all of your flow, and all of your finances. And you might say, well, that sounds scary. That sounds intense. That sounds overwhelming. And I'm not sure if I can trust that. I'm not sure if I would want to do that. Let me tell you why you might want to do that. Or maybe I should say, let me tell you why this has become so meaningful and special to me. I don't know if you are aware of this or not, but 10 years of coaching, plus a whole lot of research, data, and statistics has certainly made me aware of this. Money is the number one area that people struggle to trust. I would say very specifically, money is the number one thing impacting entrepreneurs quality of life money is the number one thing that i encounter standing in the way of coaches out there money is the number one thing that holds business owners and leaders back and I've just seen this time and time again with so much evidence. It is the top reason in our country that marriages fall apart. It is the top reason people give for why they don't live their destiny. It is the top reason people end up going down a dark life path, getting involved with crime, making decisions that ruin their life. It is the top reason that people lose sleep and put the toll of stress on their body. And it is the top reason, not the only reason, but certainly the top reason that people postpone their peace and their joy and their happiness. You know why I wanted to talk through all of that? Because a lot of people have resistance to any teaching about giving and to the concept of tithing and to the percentage of 10% that I know feels big and scary and the idea of surrendering this area over to God. Lots of people have a lot of resistance and a lot of fear around all of that. And I get it. I really get it. 
And please know, you are unconditionally loved. If you never tie the day in your life, it is important to me to say that. But I think we must acknowledge here the way that many people are navigating their relationship with money in our world does not work. And that is why the evidence we see so frequently and commonly is people struggling to trust, marriages falling apart, people not living their destiny, people ending up in crime, people losing sleep and having stress, people postponing their peace and their joy and their happiness, all because of the pain and fear and stress in this area of life. And I am here to tell you today, God does not want any of that for you. Not a single thing that I just read on that list is God's desire for your life. And so here's what I know to be the very good news. You have a personal divine invitation to hand this area of life over to God. And by the way, I really do believe it's an invitation that you get to choose. And this is uncanny. I forgot that that was there. But I literally have a wedding invitation that arrived in the mail yesterday, sitting, I want to say, seven feet away from me as I hold this mic and record right now. I was sent an invitation, and I literally get to choose. What will I RSVP? Will I RSVP yes? Will I RSVP no? I get to choose. It's not a jury summons, okay? If you get one of those, you don't have a choice. You can't ignore it. You can't just say no thank you. But this is not a jury summons. This is an invitation. And just as much as that invitation is looking up at me, I believe you have an optional but wonderful invitation to hand this area over to God. Knowing God loves you more than you love yourself even. On your best day or your worst day. Knowing that God wants you to prosper even more than you want to prosper and knowing that God knows how to take way better care of you than anything you could ever make happen or manufacture. And so the invitation comes to give this area over to God. And again, I pray that I can communicate this well. God, please speak through me clearly and powerfully right now so people get it. That it's not just the 10%. It's giving it all to God. All of the worry. All of the burden. All of the ultimate responsibility. And I know that that is a scandalous and controversial thing to say. But I'm going to say it like I feel led anyway. To give it all over to God. And when you do. You immediately lose the burden of worry. What a gift. We have talked so many times before about how any burden that you have been carrying, you don't have to carry. That's not your job. You're not meant to carry that burden. And any burden that you have been carrying, you have the option and the ability and the invitation to throw it onto God who would love to carry the burden for you. Well, that is what this invitation is all about. And I think the best part is we're not talking about momentarily letting go of the burden. We're not talking about occasionally letting go of the burden or when it gets too heavy. We're talking about you get to permanently 
let go of this burden and always have it in the hands of God. And I can honestly tell you, there is a peace I have and a calm I have and a trust I have around provision and money and finances. And it is not based on any business. It is not based on a number in my account. It is not based on any strategy or system or person or group of people. There is a peace and a calm and a trust that I unconditionally have in this area through all seasons of life. And it is based in this fact that I don't carry this burden. I don't carry this weight. And it's not just something where when I'm in need, when I'm in crisis, when I'm, you know, getting nervous, now we're going to invoke God. Now we're going to say, God, please get involved. No, no, no. God always holds this area of my life that I have entrusted. It is always God's job. It is always in God's hands. That for me is the deepest experience of God is my source. But you get to choose. You always get to choose. And part of what I want to be very clear about is you can give in category one style ways and I hope you do and I pray you do and you can do that without ever practicing or trying out this third piece. You really can. You can even sow and sow a seed and reap a harvest like we talked about in category two without ever moving over into category three. You really can because you always get to choose. God always respects choice. God always respects consent. And so, if you want to be your own source, you have the option. Keep 100%. Do with it whatever you want. Make it happen. And if you like those results, you might as well continue. But there's also this option and there's also this invitation that if you are exhausted of being your own source, if you have come to the end of your rope of being your own source, if you have concluded, as I did years ago, that I am not good at, I don't do a good job at being my own source, you have a much better option. I promise, I promise, I promise. And we are not just talking about you're going to sprinkle God on like a little magic dust on top for hopefully some good luck, right? That, that's not what this is. You get to say, God, you are my source. You are now the finance person. You are my business partner. You are my personal investor. I trust you. And I put it all into the hands, into the arms of infinite, unconditional love. And this is why I believe we are given what I will explain in a moment is really a shocking invitation. Test me in this. Now, let me explain why this is shocking. In this ancient culture, there was a common belief and text and saying that read, do not put your God to the test. So imagine you're reading the spiritual text and it is second nature to you. Everybody says, Everybody accepts this idea. Do not put God to the test. We don't do that ever, ever, ever. And I feel like God gives a genius pattern interrupt here because it is that important. It is that important to get people's attention, to interrupt the pattern 
to make sure this invitation comes across loud and clear. It is that important. And God gives a pattern interrupt and says, I am actually inviting you. Test me in this. It's okay if you're unsure. It's okay if you're scared. It's okay if you're skeptical. God says, I I'm going to say something that sounds shocking that disrupts the religious rules. I'm going to give a divine pattern interrupt and a bold invitation and say, test me in this. And here's the way that I felt called to say it today. God wants you to be able to believe for yourself that God really is on your side. And I am so passionate about that. I don't want that to be something you want to believe, but it doesn't feel true. If that's where we have to start, okay. But I don't want you to end there. I don't want that to be something you just hear me say. I don't want that to be something that just sounds nice and motivational. I want you to believe and know for yourself that God really is on your side. That this is not just a neutral universe that doesn't really care one way or another, whether you prosper or suffer. See, you've heard me talk about before. There was a time when I thought the idea of a neutral universe was the best news ever, was the best message there could be because I had gotten so used to being afraid of an angry God that a neutral universe seemed like I won the lottery. For a while, I was happy with the idea of a neutral universe that doesn't care one way or the other, that is completely indifferent to me. But then I found out there's even better news than that. There is not just a neutral universe. There is, in fact, the presence and reality of unconditional love. And I promise the best case scenario it is not a universe that doesn't care at all. The best news is that you are right now, you have always been, you will always be unconditionally loved. And so I am issuing you this invitation to test God out in this if you never have before and you feel called. And as you hear this message and sit with it today, do you see how much bigger this is than just giving and just money? Because plot twist, I'll tell you right now, it's way bigger than that. It is the good news that God is on your side and has an even bigger dream for you than you have for yourself. You know, I just really believe at the core of my being that God cares about it all. One spiritual text actually goes so far as to say, God delights in the details of our lives, which is why you may have heard me say before, God is in the details. God is in the details. And it has been written, God is the best parent imaginable, that there could ever be a perfect parent for every single one of us and our inner child. It has been written that God is more loving than we could ever imagine. I did an email about this just the other day, but no matter how loving we can conceive that God is on our very best day with our very best thinking, it has been written, 
God is 15 billion light years more loving than even that. I don't have time to unpack that now. You'll have to just trust me on that one. But it has been written that God has more dreams for you than grains of sand on the shore. It has been written that God is thinking of you individually with love continually. That even right now, as you listen to this episode, God is thinking of you. God is dreaming about you. God is loving you infinitely and unconditionally. Have I convinced you yet that God cares about it all? God really does care about it all. And this is why I believe It is safe to ask for things. It is safe to use our faith. It is safe to expect goodness and a good future and a good outcome. This is why I believe it is safe to trust, even with what can feel like a scary percentage of 10%. And this is why it is safe to put this, oh, so stressful for many, many people, area of life into the hands of God. God really does care about it all. So what is this category meant for, right? I've asked this question at the end of each of these different types of giving. What is this category meant for? And I would simply answer and say, As a life-changing spiritual practice, every time you receive. Category three, what is this for? My answer would be, as a life-changing spiritual practice, every time you receive. It wasn't actually surprising to me when I found out earlier this year that one of the most successful people that I know, by the way, successful at a very young age, successful at a greater degree than me and younger than me, it wasn't surprising at all when I found out that they were a tither. Of course, of course, of course, they turned out to be a tither and someone who had done it for years and someone who swore by it. This person is working with far bigger numbers than me on a very regular basis. And yet they tithe as well and they don't flinch because this has been proven in their life and they wouldn't trade anything for having their money in God's hands. God as your business partner, God as your personal investor, God as the one with all the responsibility. And so if we were to ask that other question that we've been asking for all of these categories, what? is important for me to know here. I'm glad that you're still with me because there's a number of things I want to make sure that I share, that I want to make sure that you walk away with today. In terms of what is important to know here, first of all, I want you to know that sowing and tithing can fully overlap. I feel like I have been clear that category one and category two and category three, they're all building on each other. But I want to be especially clear about the fact that sowing and tithing can absolutely completely overlap. Now, that does not mean that you have to give an assignment every single time you use this spiritual practice. That is up to you. I am very committed to giving every single time I receive. And because we have receiving happening every single day, 
That means I am giving every single day, and I am aware. And partners have communicated to me that for those who receive often and therefore are giving often, it can be daunting. Do I always have to think of something new? Do I always have to come up with something for my seed? And so I want you to know, you don't have to feel the pressure to have an assignment every single time you sow. And I've also offered this very practical guidance to partners in the past. One thing you can do is just anchor in one of these essential truths about tithing. And so, for example, the text that I read earlier says, when you do this spiritual practice, every dimension of your life will overflow with blessing. And so you could be doing your regular giving. You could be doing this spiritual practice and simply make it your declaration. As I sow, I continue to affirm that every area of my life overflows with blessings. You can just affirm one of these core truths over and over and over again. If you want it to be simple, you can give and sow and tithe. And as you do so, affirm, God is my source. It can be as simple as that. But I want to be very clear. Sowing and tithing can fully overlap. You don't have to feel a pressure around it. But also, let's be clear, they do not have to be separate things. You can give with intention anytime you like and every time you do this spiritual practice, which means you have tons of opportunities to sow. That's the first thing I wanted to make sure I communicated here in terms of what is important. I also want to say this. Important to know for any of you who are stepping into this spiritual practice today, understand when you do this, expect your whole money world to change in wonderful ways. Now, I don't want you to be expecting like a flash of lightning across the sky the minute you do this. I don't want you to expect an overnight change, okay? That's not the idea here. But I do think it's important and fair to say here, when you do this spiritual practice consistently, expect your whole money world to change over time in significant and substantial ways. I'm talking about different money management, divine ideas, divine connections and people showing up, quote unquote, out of nowhere, strategies you've never heard of or thought of before, invitations, opportunities. I could go on and on. The list goes on and on of what I've seen, but I want you to understand when people step into this spiritual practice and they say, God, you are my source. You are my business partner. You are my personal investor. Things start to change and your whole experience with money and your whole money worlds can change if you're open to it. Because when you step into this, all things are possible on a whole new level with God as the source and God as your business partner. So, that felt important for me to tell you. Expect your whole money world to change. And then I think this is the final thing on my important list, but one other thing that I felt was really, really important to share here. And again, there is so much gold even heading towards the end. So thank you for staying with me through this extended episode. I felt led to say here, remember when it comes to tithing, it's not arithmetic, it's geometry. Remember when it comes to tithing, it's not arithmetic, it's geometry. Or we could also say it's multiplication. It's not adding, it's multiplying. Let me explain what I mean in terms of, as some would playfully call it, the God math here. 
arithmetic would tell us, and really only has the ability to tell us, 100 minus 10 equals 90. I know this is very basic, forgive the Sesame Street vibes for a moment, but this is all that arithmetic can tell us. 100 minus 10 equals 90. That's all arithmetic can tell us. But see, geometry, by the way, a class that I found very complex and remember not liking and remember struggling with, but geometry has the ability to give us all sorts of equations. And just to use one example for fun, geometry has the ability to say, we can take 90 and we could decide that we're going to make it 90 squared. And 90 squared, for those following along at home, becomes 8,100. Now, it would take a long, 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 long time and a lot of numbers and a lot of addition and a lot of steps and a lot of repetition for us to ever get to 8,100 from an arithmetic standpoint, starting from 100. That would take a long time to get to potentially. But see, geometry opens up lots of possibilities. And suddenly, with one equation, we can say 90 squared immediately equals 8,100. You know, I don't know if this is a perfect example, but I really believe this is how it works when it comes to tithing and divine multiplication. That we don't want to think of it in terms of arithmetic, but rather in terms of geometry, in terms of multiplication. See, if you think of it in terms of arithmetic, it will always feel like a risk and a loss and a foolish move. Why in the world would anyone want to subtract? And yet, isn't it the case that so many of the most important spiritual decisions we could ever make hinge on something that doesn't seem logical to our ego and our mind? Why would we believe in someone or something that we cannot see? Why would we forgive someone who really hurt us, why would we be willing to bless and pray for people that we would consider our enemy? Why would we ever think that our spoken word could have an effect on matter and the material world? There is so much that doesn't necessarily make sense to the ego and to the logical mind, but if you understand the power of divine multiplication and the non-linear way that God can be your source and business partner and personal investor, you know 90 can become anything. 90% with God in the equation has infinite capability, infinite capacity, infinite potential for multiplication. 90 can certainly become way more than your original 100 when it's all in the hands of God. And so I felt like it was important to say, when you think about the numbers and the math and the logic of it all, don't think arithmetic, think geometry, think God equations and the infinite potential of what your 90 can become with divine multiplication always involved. You know, as I was getting ready to do this teaching, I wrote an email to my partners and I said, if anyone has any questions that 
you have for me around this stuff that you think might be helpful as I create this teaching, send them on over. And one of my partners wrote me and said, I just have one question I'm curious about. They asked me, what would you say is most different about the way you view tithing now from the way you were taught it as a kid? And thank you, by the way, for this question. You know who you are. I love this question. And here's what I would say to it. I'm very excited to share this answer. As a kid, the only thing that I really perceived about tithing was that you had to do it. To make sure that you weren't sinning, to make sure God wasn't upset or holding it against you, maybe for fear of punishment or something going wrong. The only way I understood it was that it was something you had to do. It was a rule. It was a requirement. It was something that certainly I felt nobody wanted to do or liked doing, but some people had enough guilt to do it. And by the way, there are a lot of adults. There are coaches and mentors and leaders and people maybe even listening right now. And this is still how they view tithing. Something that they would never under any circumstances continue doing. And that's okay. I respect your choice. They view it as something that people would only do because they were required to. Something that people surely only do because of guilt. And again, I respect everybody's choice and free will and perception, but I will also say shout out to the incredible, generous people and partners in this community because I am very clear, you all do not give from fear. You all do not give from guilt. You all do not give from obligation. And I just wanted to mention that and acknowledge that and shout you out. But again, that's how I viewed it as a kid. And really, particularly, I felt like it was a sacrifice thing, right? You accepting less, being willing to settle for less in order to be loyal to a church, in order to be loyal to God, in order not to get punished. That is really how I viewed it. So you can imagine I never wanted to do it. I wasn't eager to do it. (laughs) I tried to avoid doing it at all costs as a kid. But that is so far from how I view it and understand it now. And maybe this is a strange way to explain it, but this is where I felt led to go. In the sales world, they often say, When you have a really great product, it should not feel like you have to manipulate people or like you have to coerce people or like if you don't trick people into it, they'll never buy, right? None of those things should be the case. None of those things are a good sign, clearly. In the world of sales, they say, when you have a truly great product, Your customers should feel like it would be crazy for them not to buy. Crazy for them not to say yes. Crazy for them not to take you up on it. And I know maybe that's a weird principle to bring up, and I'm not really in the world of sales anyway, but that came to my mind as I was preparing for this teaching because when you really understand the promise of tithing, the benefits of tithing, the gateway of tithing, when you understand what it's all about, when you understand the divine guarantee being offered here and what it really means and what it really gives to you, you want to do it. In fact, 
it almost feels crazy to you to think that some people don't do it. It, it feels crazy to you that anyone would choose not to do it. And I'm not saying that you have to view it that way. It's okay if you don't. It's okay if you see it differently than me. But that is how I feel now. Because what I didn't understand as a kid that I now understand is that God doesn't need anything from me. But God does have my very best interests in mind. Always, always, always. You may have heard me teach in another episode. I learned long ago that God is always the most loving voice in the room. And so with this divine invitation being available, it's not because God has a need or God wants something from me, or God needs to make a rule for me to follow. This divine invitation is available simply as a gateway to abundance and the burden of worry being taken away from me. The way that I see it, the way that I feel it, the way that I understand it now, This is a gateway to ease. This is a gateway to expansion. This is a gateway to more. And I have nothing to lose and everything to gain by saying yes to it. And I can promise you, little 10-year-old me did not comprehend any of that. But me today, I am so thankful that I know this, that I have this available, that this is a spiritual practice that will forever be a part of my life. And the truth is, you couldn't talk me out of it no matter how hard you tried. You just couldn't. And so to return one more time to this idea of how I viewed it as a kid, I want to be very clear today. When we talk about this third category of giving, I am not challenging anyone to sacrifice and go with less. That is not the message here. I am sharing with you and simply passing along a divine invitation for more. And I will tell you, this is my truth, this is my story, this is my testimony. Even before I had a business or was a coach or was even an entrepreneur of any kind, it is my pathway, it is my journey that this was an undeniable supernatural path to more for me that I never could have produced on my own. I felt led to share a never before shared part of my story here and I got to tell you, I actually can't believe that I've never taken the time before today to really sit down, remember all of this, write it all out, look at it all in one place, and then share it because it is unreal. It is unbelievable what I'm about to share with you. And yet, I know it happened. I know it's real because I lived it, right? So never shared this before, felt led to share it here. Many of you know, I first started giving and specifically started practicing this category three, level three version of giving 14 years ago. It also happened to be the exact week I got kicked out of the house and was a terrified teenager wondering what was going to happen next with immediately no place to go. That was within a week of me first making this decision to give, as many of you know. $40, which I pulled out of an ATM. I don't need to repeat the story here. But here's what I wanted to share that I've never shared before. After I started tithing, over the next several years, the following things happened. And it blew me away when I wrote these all out and had it all in front of me for the first time. I knew I had to share this with you. 
after I started tithing. An incredible family offered a place for me to live for free all summer. The exact week I got kicked out of the house. After I started tithing, I was given a dream place to live for holiday breaks and summer breaks. After I started tithing, I got an incredible internship that the company created just for me. I consistently got, all throughout college at multiple universities, large amounts of scholarships that I was told to give up on, that I was told not to expect I would get approved for, and yet I did. After I started tithing, people reached out from across the country offering to help me with things and gift me with things and support me in any way that I needed. People volunteered to sew into my future work all on their own without any prompting from me. After I started tithing, I was offered a well-paying full-time position for my breaks in college that gave me complete freedom and flexibility to learn and to do whatever I wanted with my time while having a place to live and getting paid well for it. And maybe my favorite example of them all that shows the principle of geometry, not arithmetic, okay? After I started tithing, literally just a couple of months later, I went from making $450 approximately every two weeks to gigs that paid me $500 a day as a college student. Literally within just a couple of months after beginning to tithe. Now, I almost didn't want to share that because it sounds so hokey. It sounds like one of those spammy comments, right? I can't believe I'm making so much money from my investments. Follow this person. Like, that's what it sounds like to me. But this was my literal story. And I have never fully connected the dots and written it all out in this way. That just a couple of months after I started this practice, I was given a new opportunity and given a new platform and introduced to some new divine connections. And I went from a job that paid me $450 every two weeks to a gig that regularly paid me $500 or more at a time, even in a single day. Wow, wow, wow. I'm just sitting here in shock at my own list and experience here. And Please understand as context, I wasn't in personal growth world yet at this time. I wasn't manifesting anything consciously or on purpose for the vast majority of that time. But stuff just started to flow to me because God was my source and God was my business partner and God knew how to get it to me in supernatural ways right where I was and I was open. I gotta tell you family, I can't take credit whatsoever for making any of those things happen. That is just the success story of this particular practice of giving. That is just the real life MTV true life tithing story that I lived. And I will share with you, though this feels a little bit vulnerable to share. I remember there was a day where I was talking to God about all the different chapters in my own journey of receiving over the years. And I felt like God said to me, can we take a moment, my beloved child, because God always speaks with gentleness to me. But it was like God said, can we acknowledge my child, how much you received, how easily you received, 
how simple it was to trust, to release, to let me be your source. And is it possible that you learned so much over the years and over time and without realizing it, you got on a hamster wheel you never intended to be on and it all got very complicated and it all got very heavy and complex and intense. And before long, you were carrying a burden that you weren't even used to carrying. And before long, you were trying to make it happen all on your own because you thought that that's what you had to do or were supposed to do, even though that's never what was intended for you. And what if you could go back to how simple and easy and wonderful it was before we overcomplicated it. And I really do look back on that time and that season and those years of everything that unfolded for me. Before I was trying to be the perfect entrepreneur, the perfect CEO, the perfect coach. But when I was operating, with the God as my source paradigm. And when I was operating with this simple but life-changing spiritual practice in my life. See, I pray that hearing those examples makes it abundantly clear. The way I saw it as a kid was just wrong, just way inaccurate. This has never been about sacrificing and accepting less. And I am so sorry for anybody who ever taught it to you that way. I am so sorry for the demonstrations that may have existed in your life that way. I am most sorry for anybody that ever presented a God like that to you. Because this is not about subtracting. This is not about sacrificing. This is not about accepting less. This is about taking on God as your business partner, trusting from the beginning, saying yes to this invitation, saying yes to more, and letting divine multiplication and blessing be the story of your life. You know, in just a moment, I'm going to pray here and I really want to pray for every single person that is listening in this episode and specifically to pray for my partners and to pray for this community. And I'll get to that in a little bit. But as we move towards that prayer, let me just say this. I really believe this whole conversation and particularly the opportunity to give, the opportunity to sow, the opportunity to experience for yourself the spiritual practice of tithing. I really believe this is all just a gateway for so many people to end up realizing or discovering or remembering how loved they really are. Just how supported and cared for they are. And that is really my story. That truly understanding this, trusting it, seeing it work in my own life turned out to be a gateway for me to end up feeling more loved and receiving more love than ever before. And that is what I want for you more than anything else. And as I speak this right now, recording in advance, but thinking of you who will be hearing this across all space and time, God, I thank you. This is my prayer for every single person listening to this episode, that all of this would just be a gateway for them to more possibility, to more goodness, to more love, to more of you, to really knowing and experiencing and feeling just how loved they are like they never have before. And I'll tell you, 
one of the most potentially controversial, scandalous, but beautiful things that I believe, okay? Are you open to hear it? Are you ready? I don't think that God gets offended when people come to God initially just because of money. So many people might disagree with me on this, but I gotta tell you, personally, I don't think God gets offended when people come to God initially just for money or just because they are in need. Now, a lot of people say, you can't come to God only when you're in crisis. You can't come to God just so God makes your dreams come true. You can't come to God just because you're in a moment where you need something. I've heard many, many, many of these sentiments over the years, but I'm gonna make the case to you if I can for just a moment of why I believe what I just spoke. Many of you know there is a famous story, in fact, the most famous story that Jesus told, which is often known as the prodigal son. And I could cry so easily thinking about the message of unconditional love that is in that story. And I could talk about that story for 10 hours and not run out of things. But here's why I wanna bring up that story for just a brief moment. The son in that story has all of the inheritance. He is fully a son. He is very, very wealthy. He has all of the inheritance with his name on it. We could truly say he had it all. And yet, he believes the illusion that he is missing something. That in some way and for some reason, separation would actually be better than wholeness. That doing it on his own would actually be better than being loved and being connected and having a family and a father and a source. And so the son in the story that we often call the prodigal son, he takes his inheritance and runs and leaves the house and does his own thing and blows all the money very, very quickly on terrible decisions. And by the way, what does this show you about the heart of God, the love of God, the unconditional nature of it? That you can have terrible intentions in mind. You can be ready to make some bad decisions, but unconditional is still unconditional. And the father in the story says the inheritance is still yours. The father in the story says, I may not have a good feeling about what's about to happen next, but the inheritance is still yours and you get to choose. And I respect that and I authorize that and it's up to you. Now, of course, if you know the story, you know that what the son ends up discovering is that nothing gets better doing it in separation he discovers that nothing is in fact better when you move away from love. He discovers that living a life not based on your true desires, but just on the cravings you have when you feel empty is not a recipe for happiness or success. And so as the story goes, things go downhill very quickly. The happiness goes down, the fun goes down, the love, the provision, the friends and people around him go down. And he ends up in lack and suffering and pain in an experience he was never intended to live in. Now, here's why I bring this up and, and why I bring this story into the conversation at the end here. 
We, of course, are told in this story about a famous scene where the son comes home and returns, and there is the father on the front porch waiting for him. And it's a beautiful story. And again, if I got into it the right way, I could cry on the spot. But here's what I want to emphasize that might be a little unexpected for somebody today. If you really read the story, Arguably, some people would say the most famous short story of all time. If you really read the story, the son does not come home because he feels bad. He does not come home because he misses his father. He does not come home for the family or the relationship or the love. If we read the story, what we discover is he came home because he was out of money. He came home because he was broke and desperate and in need. He literally comes home just hoping he can somehow finagle his way into a job because he's broke and he's out of options and he doesn't know what else to do. And I know this might be dicey and controversial, but that really isn't a concern of mine at this point because I feel like I'm fighting for somebody in the realm of consciousness to know how loved they are, to know that they have a second chance, to know that how their life looks right now is not how it has to be or how the story is going to end. And most importantly, to know that God will meet you wherever you are. And I think it's so striking. I can't get away from it. Technically speaking, the son came home for money. Not for love, not for restoration, not for healing in the family. The son came home for money. And yet the father still welcomed him and hugged him and embraced him and immediately said, you are my son and you still have all of the inheritance and welcome 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 home and here's what i believe here's why i brought this up today i think there's a lot of people out there who lean into the spiritual conversation in a particular season of life and really if we're being honest the real reason that something got their attention, that they tuned in, that they were looking for answers is because of money, because of lack, because something is happening for them in the external realm that feels urgent. And by the way, you're not alone. Many people are in that position, even listening right now. And I have been there, done that, literally telling the story. So it's my belief that many people, and some of you listening right now, have leaned into the spiritual conversation because you didn't know where else to turn or because you are navigating some lack and nothing seems to be working or because you're just hoping to find some secret, some key, some path to success. And I get it. I'm okay with that fact. I have no judgment on that whatsoever. And again, it is my contention here. I am convinced God has no judgment on it. That God will meet you right where you are. In the middle of your journey, with whatever matters to you, that God will meet you and is meeting you right here. But here's what I know to be true about when you look within, about when you turn to God, about when you return or come for the first time to the spiritual conversation for whatever reason brings you. When you get there, there will be provision. Make no mistake about it because God is the source and there is an endless source and supply and 
the son comes home because he's broke, because he's desperate, looking for a job, and he ends up once again as a son with an entire inheritance. There is provision, make no mistake about it. I will never apologize for that or water that down. But also, you won't just discover provision. You will also discover love. You will also discover belonging. You will also discover the truth of who you really are. And again, this is my prayer. You will end up letting yourself be more loved than ever before, and it will change your whole life. And so I had to share that near the end today because as we talk about giving, as we talk about sowing and reaping, as we talk about tithing, all of these are so important to me. And they all have such practical and tangible benefits and they've all changed my life. But also, I simply have to let you know, they are all a gateway to discovering just how good God really is, which is life-changing. They are all a gateway to discovering how loved you really are, which is life-changing. And I just want to speak over you that if you are feeling called to any part of this conversation, to any of these forms of giving, to any next steps in any of this realm, I want you to know there is more goodness and more love and more God on the other side for you. I promise you that. And that gets me excited. That moves me more deeply than just about anything else. That is why I do the work that I do. I do want you to prosper above all else and in all things just as much as your soul prospers. That is my prayer. I want your life to be amazing in every way from the inside out. And with that, comes the truth. I want you to know at the deepest level how unconditionally loved you are. I want you to know at the deepest level how much good God really wants for your life. And I want you to have the relationship with God that your soul has always craved. So I have taken the time to talk through in this episode today the three ways in which I give and believe in giving with all of the details and specifics and principles behind them and to share with you all the ways that this has changed my life. I really do want you to have all of the information. As I said, people tell me all the time, they have never heard some of these principles or ideas before. And so I wanted to take my time in another extended episode and share all of the information with you. And like I said, it is my prayer that even if you are already practicing and working with all three of these different categories of giving, that you learned something new and are walking away with something new today. But my goal really is for you to be able to experience the power of generosity to the fullest for yourself. And I want to take a moment here and give a quick shout out and a quick thank you to all of my partners all around the world. Partners, thank you, thank you, thank you for giving to make content like this and teachings like this one possible and available for people just like you worldwide. If you're new to me and to my work, and you're wondering what exactly is partnership, I'm not going to talk about it at great length here, but I will mention a couple of quick things here. 
There is a website that you can get all of the information at. It is lovegrovepartners.com. Most simply, I would tell you, my partners are a group of people who believe in this work and choose to support it on a consistent basis. And it really is the most special relationship to me. It really is the most amazing group of people. As many of you know, I begin every single day praying for my partners and speaking a blessing over my partners. So if you're in the community, you need to know, please remember, you never go a day without prayer or without love. I have a sacred document, which I read from earlier, that contains my partner's testimonies and successes and results. And I keep track of those and celebrate them as they come in one after another, after another. I also have a partner wall on a screen in my home, and it has all of my partner's faces smiling with radiant joy, and they scroll by in gorgeous picture frames, and I get to see them and think of them and pray for them as they scroll by. That's the partner community. And it is an incredibly special thing to me. And again, I want to give a shout out and say thank you. But in the context of this teaching today and all of the different forms of giving, partnership is simply a journey of doing this together in a way that amplifies the whole experience. Partnership is simply people choosing to give, really in all of these ways, here. Because this is a message they believe in. And they know that this is good ground. And so there are partners who give in the category one kind of way. They just simply want to give. They like being a part. They like being able to support this work. And in a category one, foundational generosity kind of way, they just choose to give. I welcome that. I celebrate that. I joyfully receive every gift of gratitude and appreciation. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart to all of you who have ever supported this work in any way. Then there are partners who give in that level two, category two kind of way. And personally, for what it's worth, I would just say, if you're going to give here anyway, why not turn it into a seed and schedule a harvest? Personally, my take on it would be, if you have the option and you know it's good ground, at the very least, why not sow and reap deliberately? And on that note, I just want to take a moment here and let you know and assure you, you've heard me say many times the most powerful thing in the world is an agreement. And we are in agreement. That is one of the most phenomenal things about partnership. And I want you to know, I will always be here standing in faith, in agreement, willing to believe with you and pray over whatever it is that you are believing for. And I felt led to just speak to this for a moment, you know, one of the things that fascinates me, again, about the miracle stories that I've referenced several times today, one of the things that fascinates me is the way that Jesus spoke about faith, like it was a measurable thing that you could almost feel within a room. Because I really understand that. 
I really have felt that before, and I wonder if you listening today can relate and have felt this as well, that faith is contagious, and so is the lack thereof, so is doubt. Have you ever been in a conversation with somebody and you could feel how much they believed in their vision? Or maybe, have you ever been in a conversation with somebody and you could feel how much they believed in you? Which is a glorious feeling. But then I could also ask, have you ever been in a conversation with somebody and you felt the doubt? You felt the heaviness of their skepticism. You felt the heaviness of how much they did not believe in you or believe it was possible. See, I know from experience, faith is contagious, but so is doubt. And so I think of one story in particular where Jesus was getting ready to heal somebody. And this story kind of cracks me up, to be honest, because it's a little bit shady and funny to think about. But in this story, Jesus literally asked certain people to exit the room because their lack of faith and doubt was getting in the way. He could literally feel their lack of faith and their doubt. The the lack of faith and the doubt was literally changing the atmosphere. I think that's kind of wild to think about. But for whatever reason, I literally put it in my notes. I felt led to mention it here. Faith is so contagious and doubt is so contagious that there is literally a story where Jesus says, I'm going to need some people to leave the room because the lack of faith is in the way. The doubt is in the way. What they are believing is in the way and affecting the energy, affecting the atmosphere. And I reflect on this because more and more and more these days, I am just aware. People come to me and end up finding my work and finding these teachings in pivotal moments when they need to be connected to someone who will believe with them. I was just on a phone call with someone the other day. And in essence, what they said to me is, I needed to know that I could talk to somebody right now in this pivotal moment that would be a voice of faith. Not someone who would meet me with fear, not someone who would meet me with doubt, not someone who would meet me with discouragement. I needed to talk to someone who would believe with me. And so as I said, there are partners who consistently sow and do it with intention and give their seed an assignment and they participate in this community and they give in that way and I want you to know I am always going to be here to believe with you and your faith will never be shut down in this space and I will always take a stand for the universal truth that all things are possible for the one who believes and you are the one. And then last but certainly not least, there are partners who give in that category three, level three territory, the spiritual practice of tithing, where God is their source, their business partner, their financier, I don't know if I pronounced that right. And their personal investor. God is all of it. And they don't carry the burden of maintaining finances all on their own. 
they don't carry the burden of increasing finances all on their own. They give it over to God. And in doing so, they discover that their 90% experience with God has expanded so much, it gets to be many, many, many multiples better than a 100% experience all on their own ever could be. They're not living in the arithmetic zone. And they know that they never lose out by giving. They know that they're never looking at subtraction. They are in the territory of divine multiplication. They are living in the territory of the infinite possibility and the infinite blessing when God is your source. So lovegrovepartners.com is the website and you really are invited to give in any of those ways and all of those ways in this community. But may I just say specifically to that category number three, the spiritual practice of tithing. I just want to speak to that for a second and say, I know not everyone's going to resonate. Not everyone will be ready. Not everyone will say yes to this and that's okay. But if that is speaking to you, if that is your next step, and if you do choose to go on this journey with me as a partner, I just want you to know every belief and every truth that I have spoken today, I immediately am in agreement with you for your life and over your life as you step into this today. And it would be an honor to pray for you every single day, to believe with you continually as you go on this journey for yourself. Now, as promised, I want to end today with a short prayer. I'm going to try to make it short because I have gone for a long time in this episode as well. But I really am praying for every single one of you who is listening. And I have been praying for you even before this episode reached you. Specifically, I am praying that you would know beyond a shadow of a doubt God is your source, that that really does work and you really can trust. I am praying for you that you would know and be utterly convinced that God is on your side. That God is not against you, but God is for you. God is on your side. You are more loved than your brain can even fathom. And I am praying for you that you would know that you are really, truly safe putting this area into the hands of God. It is safe to tithe. It is safe to release. It is safe to trust. It is safe to surrender. It is safe to let go. I am praying all of that for you. And as we go into a prayer moment in just a second, I feel led today to pray some really bold things specifically over my partners. And I just want to share with you what they are real quick. So you'll have a preview as we go into this prayer together. But these are the five things that I specifically felt led to pray over my partners in this episode. Number one, that we together would be the most generous community in the world. Number two, that every single one of us would be a walking demonstration of the blessing. Number three, that we would always be in overflow and have something to give when inspired. Number four, 
that we would have hundreds of stories to tell of the harvest and the provision and the miracles in our lives. And number five, that people in this community's success would explode on a whole new level in the next 12 months as they begin to operate with God as their source, their partner, and their investor. I told you they were bold, but that's what I felt led to speak, to declare, to pray over all of this community and all of my partners today. And so, God, we move into a prayer moment now letting ourselves be right where we are. Aware that this is the holy instant where all things are possible. A fresh starting point of creation. A clean slate moment in which all things are made new. Thank you, God for leading me, guiding me, inspiring me to record this episode. Thank you for all of the truth and all of the ideas and all of the principles that you gave me for this particular teaching. Thank you, God, for speaking through me during these moments and for translating it in an individualized, customized, personalized way for every single person who is listening. God, I celebrate the gift of who they are. I celebrate that they are a child of God, an heir to all of the inheritance. And There is no higher identity they could ever have than that. God, I am praying today that every single person would receive the exact message, the exact idea, the exact breakthrough that they need to walk away with from this teaching. I am speaking that in advance, declaring the end from the beginning. Because at the time that I speak this word, no one has heard this episode yet. But by the time these words are reaching every listener on the other end, they are now at the conclusion. The episode is out. They have heard this teaching. And so we celebrate now all that has been received all that has been revealed, all that has been shifted during this time together. God, I feel led to take a moment and just speak this truth as the deepest reality over every single person who is praying with me right now. May they breathe into this truth that all is well, that they are exactly where they are supposed to be. And everything is working together for their good. May they breathe into that right now. May they relax into that right now. May they feel the truth of that on the deepest level right now. God, for every single person praying with me and in agreement with me now, May they feel how true it is that you are their source. And thank you, God, for the healing, the course correction, the transformation within our consciousness around this truth right here and right now. Our business is not the source. Our job is not the source. Our clients are not the source. Our partner is not the source. Our family is not the source. God, wherever we would be tempted, 
to think that the external person or thing or system is ultimately the source. May that confusion dissolve. May that illusion dissolve. And may we be brought back to the truth. You are the source and supply and an infinite one at that. God, I speak this truth for every single person praying with me now and may they feel the power of it that you are on their side. They are not alone. They have not been abandoned. They don't have to figure it all out. They don't have to make it happen all by themselves. They are not hopeless or trapped or stuck. May they feel the truth of these words fully right now that you are on their side. They have a shepherd. They have a perfect parent. They have a friend at the highest level with endless grace and favor for them. And so I speak this truth, God, that you are on our side. And then, God, I speak this truth for every single person praying with me now that it really is safe for them to put this area of life into the hands of love. May they feel that reassurance, that safety, that peace. That it really is safe. They really are safe as they put this area of life and any other area of life into your hands. God, thank you for these bold prayers that you inspired me to pray over my partners. I step into every single one of them in faith. I boldly speak every single one of them for each and every partner and for this community. Thank you, God, that we are the most generous community in the world. Thank you that our generosity makes all kinds of impossible things possible. Thank you that our generosity takes us places and expands our world in ways we never dreamed or imagined. Thank you, God, that we are known for our generosity, maybe above all else. God, I speak this truth and I celebrate it. Thank you that in this community and for all of my partners, We are a walking demonstration of the blessing. We know that the blessing is on us everywhere we go and everything we do. And what a wonderful story to get to live into. So thank you, God, that we are a walking demonstration of the blessing. Thank you, God that we are always in overflow and we always have something to give whenever we are inspired. Thank you, God, that from this day forward, money never holds us back. We are always able to answer the call. We are always able to say yes. Thank you, God. I speak this word for each and every one of us that we are always in overflow. We always have something to give when inspired. Thank you, God, that we have hundreds of stories to tell of harvest and provision. And I just feel led to clarify here. I felt led to write that one over every single person individually because God the truth is there already are hundreds of stories hundreds of blessings hundreds of miracles within this community and even within this year at the time of this recording there have already been hundreds so God I want to make it clear to every person 
that each individual partner gets to have hundreds of stories to tell of your goodness, your care, your provision. I speak that over them. And then last but not least, certainly not least, God, I decree and declare my partner's success is exploding on a whole new level over the next 12 months as they start to operate with God as their source, their business partner, and their investor. Thank you, God, for this vision that you gave me today, this wonderful declaration to make, to step into, to speak over this community. And thank you, God, in advance for all that is going to unfold in the lives, in the businesses, in the finances of my partners over the next 12 months. God, as I bring this prayer and this episode to a conclusion, I just want to pray for everybody that that prodigal son story resonated with. I know that part may not have been for everyone, but God, I do feel that it was for someone. And if there's one thing I know to be real about you and your heart, it is the truth that you would always do whatever it takes to find the one, to rescue the one, to embrace the one and make sure they knew that they were not alone, to make sure they knew just how loved they really are. So God, I want to take a moment and acknowledge there may be someone listening right now and the only reason they clicked on this, the only reason they tuned in, the only reason if they're being honest, that they've been looking for anything spiritual, any spiritual answers lately, is that they're feeling desperate, that things aren't working, and they're just trying to find a better way, a way out of the lack, some path to provision, some path out of being broken, being tired, and being stuck. Some path to a better life and a better experience. And there may be someone listening right now, and they came into this space just looking for that on a pretty low level. And God, I just want to pray for them and speak over them the way that I really do feel this and believe this, that you don't judge us, but in fact, you meet us right where we are. And I just want to remind them of the truth that the son in this story came back broke and desperate and looking for a job. But when he got home, when he arrived there, what was waiting for him was a hug and a tearful embrace and a welcome home dance party celebration. And I feel right now in the invisible realm that that is what is occurring for somebody who is praying with me right now. God, they weren't even looking for you, but they're realizing in this moment that you are meeting them right where they're at. And they might have just been looking for a job looking for a miracle to get them out of lack, looking for some quick cash, some quick relief, some quick solutions. But God, what they're finding, what they're going to feel in this moment is that what is encountering them, what has been waiting for them is a hug and a tearful embrace 
and a welcome home dance party celebration. And I feel the welcome home dance party celebration happening in the invisible realm for somebody right now. I feel the hug from God, the divine embrace meeting somebody who is hearing these words right now. And thank you, God, for the truth that yes, you know how to get us out of lack. You certainly are a source, a a supply, and a provider. And you do have the answer for all of these things, material things, financial things, all things pertaining to life. But God, I pray that first and foremost, they would just receive the love and let themselves be loved. That second of all, they would realize that you are on their side. That you have incredible plans and purpose for them. Way bigger dreams for them than they even have for themselves. And God, specific to this area of finances, I pray that they would realize the good news is so much better than they ever thought. It's not being a servant. It's not getting a job. It's not a little bit of help in the midst of the lack. But God, it is a glorious identity and a wonderful inheritance. It is the experience of having everything they need under all circumstances at all times. It is the experience of being furnished in abundance for every good work that they were created to do. It is the experience of a blessing that stays on them continually and unconditionally and makes one rich without adding any sorrow or toil to it. It is an experience of prospering from the inside out with every single piece of the prosperity pie intact. It is an experience of having every good thing, every good and perfect gift, lacking nothing. God, what's waiting for them here is so much better than they thought. The good news is always so much better than we thought. You are always so much better than we thought. So thank you, God, for helping us see and perceive and receive the good news today. Thank you for setting people free from paradigms that no longer belong and no longer serve them. Thank you, God, for expanding people's worlds and perspectives and vision right now, even as I speak this word. Thank you, God, for helping us recognize the seed that we have in our hands and all the potential it contains. Thank you, God, that we have the ability in this moment and in any moment to schedule a new harvest. Thank you, God, that you offer to take every burden off of our shoulders. Thank you, God, that we don't have to bear the responsibility all by ourselves. Thank you, God, that we really do get to give it all over to you. And as we do, every dimension of our lives overflows with blessing and we always walk in overflow it just gets better and better and better and we always have more than enough thank you god for all the fruit that this teaching produces in people's lives. I can feel it already, and I celebrate it already, and I speak this word for each and every one of us in the name of the one who said, all things are possible for the one who believes, and we 
are the ones who believe. And so it is, and so we are. Amen and amen. Well, if you're hearing this, that means you made it all the way to the end. And congratulations, I celebrate you for that. I appreciate you being here more than you know. And a couple of things as we bring this episode to a close. First of all, if this spoke to you today and you did indeed learn something new, on whatever topic, whatever idea, whatever piece of this was relevant to you, would you take a second to share this episode on your page or your feed or your story? You can decide whatever your social media platform of choice is. But what I know for sure is that the only way that good things in the world expand is when they are shared. And you all have been such a part of that with my work from the very beginning. So thank you in advance for taking a second to share this episode. I promise you this is how it works because I get the messages and the testimonials continually. You will share the episode having no idea who's going to see it, who's going to click on it, who's going to find it. But God is in the details, as I shared earlier today, and God will direct people to it, the people for whom it is exactly the encouragement and hope that they need in this moment. So thank you for being a part of blessing somebody else and sharing this episode. I also want to say, if you are new to me and we are not yet connected on a regular basis, Let's fix that, shall we? Let's change that today. There is a website you can go to. It is lovegrove.club, and it will also be in this episode description, lovegrove.club. When you go to that website and sign up, it is completely free, and you and I will be connected via email so that I can share messages of encouragement with you on a regular basis in your inbox. And as soon as you sign up, you will receive my favorite teaching of all time as a free gift, just to thank you for connecting in that way. Lovegrove.club, once again, is the website. And you definitely want to get connected if this episode resonated with you, because we put out a ton of different resources out there. There are high energy, workout mixes that you can use full of inspiration called rave church there is a live feed that i have on youtube that you can use to renew your mind and reprogram your subconscious at any time 24 7 and so much more so many more teachings about all kinds of topics not just this one so let's get connected lovegrove.club and then last but not least i want to mention here just so you know what to expect if one of these categories of giving spoke to you today. If you are giving for the first time here, you can expect a thank you note and a partner message from me because we always do that. And we do our best not to miss anyone, and I don't think we have missed anyone, just to be clear. But as I said earlier, it is very important to me to get to read and pray over every single gift that comes in. So if you're giving here for the first time, expect a note of appreciation from me. If you are sewing today, I will certainly be aware of that because I am hoping that you will use the section, share with me what you are believing for on any platform that you choose. And again, the most powerful thing in the world is an agreement. It is an honor to stand in agreement and believe with you. And please know that I join you in your faith there. And then If the tithing piece, that spiritual practice that we talked about in category three spoke to you and you are taking God up on that divine invitation, which is really how I view it 
And that is why I word it that way. It's not taking me up on the, the challenge or whatever, but if you are taking God up on that invitation and this is where you would like to give, please shoot me a message and let me know that you are doing that because again, I am thrilled for you. And I wanna pray with you and pray over your glorious experience that I know is about to unfold in your life. But I think that is everything that I wanted to make sure to mention at the end here. Thank you for spending this time with me today. It is an investment into yourself, into your soul, into your journey that I know you will not regret and that I know will pay dividends on many levels for you in the days and years to come. I will see you back here soon for more of the Stephen Love Grove Show. But in the meantime, I love you, I believe in you, and the best is yet to come.